So one of the main collaborations our transport team is involved in is something called the Transport Academic Partnership, which is a funding agreement involving universities, the Department of Transport and Main Roads here in Queensland, and the Motor Accident and Insurance Commission. And it exists to basically connect researchers with industry and help those industry partners with their needs. We do all sorts of things, and each of the students involved in, in those projects is matched with someone in the department. One on transport modelling and how we can improve our prediction and forecasts for future load on the networks. Tourism and bicycle tourism. And one looking at a really innovative transit trial using apps to do demand responsive transport in areas that it's difficult to service with a conventional bus. TMR is running the service where they provide transit vehicles to collect people from where they live and take them to the location they need to get to. And so our role is to come in and really understand who is being serviced by this and how it's impacting their life. And the analysis of spatial demographics really, understanding how people are dispersed around an area and then how they use a service to get where they want to go and how who they are as a person changes their behavior on the network. And I also go to TMR and work with individuals there in person, making sure that what I'm looking at will help them understand what's going on and how they can improve their system to help more people. During my undergraduate studies, I actually witnessed a cyclist get hit by a car, and that made me really interested in these interactions between drivers and cyclists and how cultures and uh, behaviors impact what people do. There's a whole heap of things changing in the transport space that are super exciting, but also create problems. And we're not sure, for instance, whether driverless cars will solve congestion problems or actually going to exacerbate them as cars will be able to just circle and circle around without a driver. How do we design our streets, especially if we need less parking? How do we design our houses if cars no longer needed to be parked at the house? You know, there's all sorts of changes that are coming and Griffith Researchers, we're going to be part of trying to work through how that will work for Australian cities.